Good evening and welcome to our virtual open event for art, design, media and photography. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Maria Retta and I'm the head of school for Creative Arts at College Gwent and I will be presenting this evening. Peter Britton will be moderating for me and he is course leader for Foundation Degree Photography. The aims of tonight's event are to explain to you what's available for creative in College Gwent across all four campuses, how to apply and Peter will be popping various links in the chat box so make sure you have that open and available to you and it, we will be explaining how you go about doing that, what to expect when you come to college and how different it is from school. You'll have the opportunity to ask any questions that you need answering and a little bit about how to prepare for your course next year. We've got a variety of levels of courses across all four campuses, Cross Keys, Newport City, Pontypool, who, which will be the Torvine Learning Zone and Blyna Gwent Learning Zone. We've got level one courses right through to degree level courses and lots of part time courses as well, which are available on the website. And again, Peter will be popping those into the chat box for you. And uh, if you've got any questions, then please don't hesitate to, to let us know. We'd also like you to just um, pop up and say hi, let us know what course it is that you're interested in. We might be able to say a little bit more about it or if you've got any specific questions, then we're happy to answer them. The first course we're going to move on to is Level 1 Vocational Studies. There are no entry requirements for this course, but you will need a keen interest in art, design and media. I'm going to pass on to Tanya Whitaker to talk about this range of courses. Our level two courses, the entry requirements are four grade D's or above GCSEs and our level three courses, you will need five GCSEs at grade C or above. And Tanya Whitaker will talk to you a little bit more about the content. Over to you, Tanya. Hi, guys. Um, so I'm going to talk about the, the courses we have available at College Gwent. We're pleased to offer a range of art and design courses to suit any level of ability. As Maria just said, we have a level one, level two and level three courses available across all of the campuses. Our courses are ideal for students wishing to pursue a, a creative career, whether that's a fine art or illustrator, photographer, architect, interior designer, textile or fashion designer, to name just a few. We're excited to be an approved centre for the University of Arts London UAL awarding body. UAL's ethos is to focus on the creative journey and the development of ideas, which can then be taken into a variety of directions. With a strong focus on industry requirements, many of the briefs will start with a cultural trip. We have taken students to London, Bristol and seaside towns where they have the opportunity to visit galleries. It is also an opportunity for students to utilise their photography skills and also their drawing skills. The creative outcomes developed from their trips will often become a starting point for a new project. Last year, our students went to Bristol, which is rich in culture, with a project title called Urban City. Students were able to create a diverse body of work using their own photography as a starting point. So they developed cityscape images in watercolour and fine liner, continuous line drawings, which went through to wire tiles, monoprints and a textile wall hanging, along with a ceramic installation. Students have access to professionally equipped workshops and studios, such as a print workshop, ceramic and 3D workshops, textile and fashion, photography studios with a dark room, and digital art workshops, where they'll learn skills in Photoshop, Illustrator and 3D modeling software. We have also invested in new creative technologies in 3D digital printing, in biodegradable plastics and ceramics. We like to encourage our students to mix traditional art skills with this new technology. Students are able to develop and draw design ideas for a variety of products or creative outcomes. This is then taken into the digital workshops where they can scan their drawings into Illustrator or 3D modelling software, which is then printed in either plastic or ceramics. 
Projects are also driven by key themes or words. At the beginning of this year, students began with a botanical theme. The project started with students developing a series of observational drawings and paintings. These were then taken into the different workshops where they created fine art prints, they designed ceramic tiles and created Plaster of Paris relief panels in the 3D workshop. They developed cyanotypes and close-up photography and they used their designs to decorate a shirt using a combination of fabric paints, embroidery and textile application techniques. By utilising all the workshops available, students are able to transfer and develop skills in each of the creative areas. Our projects are designed with a clear focus on the creative industries. This enables students to get a sense of what it would be like working in a creative studio. For instance, one of our projects focuses on surface pattern design, where students will research areas of interest in order to develop ideas and create an imagery, which can then be repeated to form a series of patterns. These students are asked to think about the patterns and how they can trans be transfer transferred, <laughs> sorry, transferred onto wallpaper for interior design or transferred onto fabric for fashion and design. Their patterns can also be transferred onto clay in order to create functional objects for product design. The variety of content on our courses enables students to make informed decisions of where to go next on their creative journey. So when they so they, they can make an informed um, decision when they're choosing their university course. So the divide the divide <laughs> I'm losing my words now. The diverse range of creative work available on our courses allows the students to develop an exciting and vibrant portfolio ready for university in interviews or even job interviews. Um, I think that's enough for me to talk through, so thank you for listening. But if you have any questions relating to the courses, please use the chat facility and I'll answer these shortly. Thank you. Thanks, Tanya. That's really helpful. And as she said, please post in the chat. We have had a question in the chat about um, somebody who already has a level three qualification and wants to go to university to do an art related subject. And I'm moving on to that uh, very topic at the moment. So we also have within our suite of art courses at College Gwent, a WJC Foundation Studies, which is a level three stroke four qualification. Now this course is only available at Newport City Campus at the moment. And the difference with this course compared to our level one, two and three courses is it's it's a pre-degree course it's there to prepare you for university so if you've already got a levels or an equivalent level three qualification this is an extra year for you to improve and really develop your practice and skills it's a chance to experiment in lots of different specialist areas it's all about thinking in a different way and really developing your practice there are a variety of stages. There's an ice cream van driving up and down my street as we speak. I can't believe it. Um, the various stages are drawing and colour, exploring materials and making, developing specialist practice, personal development and innovation, a final major project, and you will then need to cre curate and present that final project. Uh, major project. They have lots of exciting opportunities to work with um, businesses and life briefs throughout the course, such as Newport City Homes and Natural Resources Wales, and that's just naming two of them. There's also lots of enrichment during the course, visits, visits to various museums, Pitt Rivers in Oxford, the different galleries such as Tate Britain and Modern and many, many more. This course is all about um, enriching your development and really preparing you for university. So if you were unsure of what area to specialise in, this is the course for you. If you don't feel as though you've had enough experience at A-level uh, in a particular area, A-levels can be quite limiting sometimes with the amount of resources you have access to, then this is the course for you and you should be able to develop your skill further and really specialise in, in a particular area. We have some fantastic testimonials from past students and 100% of our students have um, 
progressed on to university, which is a fantastic result. So I'm hoping that answered your question, uh, but if you do have any further questions or haven't been quite clear enough, then please post away and uh, we will still be continuing to answer questions throughout. I'm going to pass on now to Gareth Pugh and Gareth is the course leader for Games Design. Thank you, Maria. So, Nasswife, uh, good evening, everyone. So, as Maria said, my name is Gareth Pew, and I'm the course leader for Games Design Year One and Year Two. So, we run the Games Design course at Cross Keys Campus. However, we also offer digital design at Newport Campus. So, our course enables the learners to develop a vast array of skills throughout their studies, not only relevant to games design, but that are also transferable to both TV and film. Uh, like Art and Design, we also deliver the UAL curriculum, the University of Arts London, which allows the students the creative freedom to interpret every single assignment brief and develop their content solely based on their own interests. So, for example, uh, our Year 1 students have recently undertaken a battle tank competition. They had six weeks to complete the project, so they had to undertake research, they had to come up with concept of design, to turn that 2D concept into a fully textured, game ready 3D model. So once we finished that project, we asked our past students, so students who are currently in university and uh, industry, to actually judge the winner for best design. So furthermore, we also encouraged all learners to use their tanks in a pre-made Battle Royale tank game where the last tank standing was the champion. So both winners, so we liaised with the art department, so we had both winners had their tanks 3D printed to act, act as a sort of keepsake. How they interpreted that brief was complete to their theme of the brief. Uh, we find that giving the students 100% creative freedom not only aids their motivation, but allows them to go above and beyond and push the limits of their expectations because they predominantly they're, they're having fun. So even though the course has only been running for four years, uh, the quality of the work the students are producing not only exceeding college level, some are already standard with already interested in a select few of those students. So this year has been by far the strongest and the most successful year for games design. As we try and embed the competitive nature of industry into the curriculum, we have found that students have risen to the challenge, uh, well above and beyond every challenge as such. So much so we've entered those students into national competitions such as Wales Skills and international competitions such as World Skills UK for the 3D game art category. This year, our students uh, managed to take on both gold and silver medals at Wales Skills, and our biggest achievement yet was taking on the gold medal at Wales Skills UK. So words can't express how proud I am as a tutor, uh, proud I am of the students, but to be part of such a dedicated organisation that's always striving for success. Last thing I want to talk about is esports. I don't know if you're aware of esports, um, but there's experienced a rapid increase over the last couple of years. Uh, we, in our spare time, we have entered our students into the British Esports Championships. This is where students participate as a close-knit team, playing various games against a significant other colleges, a number of colleges and six forms throughout the UK. So last year we managed to get to the semi-finals in a variety of games, but this year we're hoping to go all the way. So to conclude, the Games Design course not only appeals uh, for the industry and higher education, but also focuses highly on developing life skills such as communication, uh, problem solving and working with others in addition to their own personal development. So any questions that you've got for the Games Design course, please leave it in the chat um, and come check us out on the Collegrant website as well. Thank you. Thank you, Gareth. Um, I'd just like to add to that, that the college has recently uh, been awarded the Centre of Excellence for world skills, which means that we are going to have access to lots and lots of resources and training. Um, and Gareth actually is one of the members of staff who's going to going to be heading up that. So it's really exciting and interesting. Before we move on to the next course, which is media production, um, I'd just like to answer a question we've got um, from one of the uh, people in the chat. Doing textiles in my GCSEs and you've looked at fashion design. Um, 
I'm not quite sure you finished the question there, so you might need to post it in again. But if you're interested in uh, fashion or textiles, then the level three art course is the, the course for you. The level three art course, um, as Tanya said, looks at a variety of specialisms. So you will be studying uh, fashion and textiles, photography, 3D, which could be um, ceramics or working with any any 3D um, medium printmaking um, and the 3D technologies. So you'll, you'll actually get to have a go at all those different things. So you won't specialise in one thing in particular in your first year, but we'd look at specialising more in your second year. If you don't have an art GCSE, you can still apply and you, you still will be um, able to come on to the course as long as you can show you've got a relevant skill level. So I hope that's uh, answered your question and a couple of people asking for a 99 but I'm sorry the uh, ice cream van is now gone. So I will now hand over to Peter Watkins Hughes and Peter I'm not sure if you just want to, to intro your video or whether you want me to just press play and you will um, have a chat afterwards. Should we just press play? We've said that word. Let's have some exposure. <laughs> yeah, okie dokie. So media production. Give me a sec. I'm mixing up high explosives. I've got to be careful if I drop them. Mommy! Hello and welcome to T20, the spiritual home of creative media courses here at Cross Keys College. The room itself is an old TV studio, but in reality it's a playground where your imagination can run riot and strange and terrible things can happen. You're going to blow me up again. You're going to blow me up? <laughs> We're not just about blowing things up. Here you can explore your sensitive side too. I'm sensitive. I'm not. You could use the studio to make a beautiful, heartbreaking romance about lost and unrequited love. You could make people cry all over the world. Especially if you added a cute baby dinosaur. Or a really big dinosaur, if you prefer. Or you could just use the space to explore your quiet side. Or maybe not. Or we could just use the place to have the mother of all discos. Yeah. The room is a playground where you can let your imagination and creativity run riot. There are no rules in filmmaking, except maybe one. Whatever you do, have a blast making it. Right, hello. Yeah, my name is Peter. Um, I help deliver the media production courses. Unfortunately, I haven't got enough signal to put my face up on the screen, which is probably a bit of a relief to some people. But basically, we, we offer OCR accredited courses in media production. Three levels, obviously one, two and three. Essentially, they are a pathway to potentially a degree course in media or in various disciplines or even a career pathway. Basically, in your time with us, we want to show you how to make things. We want to show you how to make films, how to make TV. And making film and TV, we'll expect you to make maybe up to 50 short films, you know, per year, etc. So it's a very intensive, very practical, very creative course. We'll also show you how to make some radio as well. You've got a chance to explore sound, explore the world of radio. It's fascinating. Also as well, because we're very modern, we're going to show you how to build websites, etc. Really, it's the entire creative portfolio. We're looking to basically give you an adventure in creativity. We're not looking for any previous experience. So don't think, oh, I haven't done that before, therefore I can't do it. What we're looking for are people that just want to sort of find themselves through creativity, through a sense of fun, a sense of play and a sense of wanting to learn about the world and maybe learn about the mediums that we're going to present to you, but also maybe say something about the world. So basically it's an adventure in creativity and hopefully it'll lead to possibly greater things and maybe you'll find yourself, you'll find your true vocation. How's that? 
Thank you very much, Pete. Um, we've just got a final um, exit video for you. Just a pause for thought, really, from Peter. So take a look. There are things you do that you can regret for a lifetime. Like being mean to your family or not keeping in touch with your friends. Equally, there are things you can regret not doing. Like not following your dreams and not doing a media production course at Colin Gwent. One day you might regret that even more than trusting those poachers with the really big guns. Peter, and I think that's given everybody um, uh, something to think about with wanting to be creative and being creative as possible. We've got a few questions in the chat which I'd like to answer before we move on to our next slide. Um, there's somebody asking about a level three BTEC and getting into university. A level three BTEC is the exact equivalent to three A levels. So if you do three A levels and you got three A's at A level and you did a vocational level three course and you got three distinctions, you would end up with exactly the same amount of UCAS points. So one or the other doesn't give, in, give you anything more to go to university. If you're struggling to decide between A-levels and BTECs, my advice to you would be think about what it is you want to do in the end. Where is it you want to go? A-levels will give you variety in the sense you can study English, history and drama. Uh, what a vocational course will do is, is really home in on your creative skills. So on an A-level, you are limited to, to what um, creative topics you can cover, whereas in a vocational course, normally those um, creative possibilities are endless because you have all your time focused in that area. But the decision is up to you, but you will leave with exactly the same amount of UCAS points, depending on the, the work that you've put in. So I hope that's answered your question. If not, please po post uh, another question in there if you'd like me to explain further. But A-levels and level three vocational qualifications are the exact same equivalent. The other question um, I've been asked is, someone's interested in the media side of fashion and wants to take fashion communication and styling in university. The level three art course would definitely be suitable for you because what the level three art course does is enables you to become a critical creative thinker and a problem solver, which are really, really important skills that you will need to go on to any university course. We actually um, historically ran a fashion styling course and we are running a HND in fashion and textiles at the moment and students from our level three um, art course do progress on to those courses now so we do have a precedent for that that our learners do go into a, a vast array uh, of different areas so again I hope that's answered your question but if not please uh, post again um, we you know, we'd rather you be asking the questions. It's a lot easier when we're face to face and it's quite difficult uh, when we're online. So um, please let me know if that hasn't answered. I'm going to move on to college life now and hand you over to Peter Britton, who's going to talk to you a little bit about um, what to expect when you come to college. Okay, good evening, everyone. A uh, really good question so far. And just to um, just to, we had a nice little lead in there from Maria's points. Um, just, you know, if you're weighing up A levels in a vocational course, you really must be thinking um, about what you want to be and where you want to go, where you want your career to take to take you. So with regards to that, college life is different from um, school. It is different from A levels and across all of our campus. It is different in that you would have just one. Um, you would have just one uh subject area one thing to consider at once uh whereas in uh, a levels you'd have several things in college 
just that one discipline, that one uh, one area of appropriate skills would push you further in your education and potentially um, hopefully allow you into your chosen career path. Uh, in addition to your course, you gain a vital qualification in uh, Welsh back, which will be seamlessly incorporated into your course and uh, within our art courses is subject appropriate where possible. So you'd be building knowledge and skills even by your Welsh baccalaureate. We've got amazing facilities here. Most of our lecturers have mentioned them so far. Our studios, our art studios, photography studios, television studios. We have an awful lot of equipment on camp on all of our campuses for your use. In addition to physical equipment, all of you guys would have access to Microsoft 365. You'd have your own account. You'd have access to full Adobe CC. So you'd have all the computer software that you'd need. And you'd also have an online storage area for your work by OneDrive as well. Uh, and don't forget about the trips that we would normally be doing as well. We'd have exciting gallery visits, educational trips and events that would take place across all courses. All of our courses and campuses have final shows. The Newport's ending up in the lovely Riverfront Theatre in Newport. Last year, we had to do things slightly differently. So we created an online gallery exhibition for the students to showcase their work. Um, and I'd like you all to have a little look at that. I'm going to pop a link in our um, much used chat area now. So if everybody wants to have a little look at that, you'll be able to see some of the great work that was produced last year. And that will give you a really lovely insight into the sort of things that you will be producing on your own individual courses. So keep questions coming. We will endeavour to answer um, and keep posting in our chat area. Maria, back to you. Thanks, Peter. We've got another question in the chat asking about a fashion course in Colleguent. Would it be better than doing it in your sixth form school? Um, well, I think the question I would be asking is the facilities that are available in school. Um, I'm assuming if you were doing it in school, then it would be an A level that you would be studying. So it would only be a certain amount of hours a week. Whereas if you were studying uh, a course with us, then it would be full time. We don't offer a full time fashion course at level three. Uh, fashion and textiles would be integrated into that level three course, but we do urge people to really push themselves and try other specialisms. And working in other areas and producing other things really makes them uh, a better artist all round. Uh, in our in college, the, the staff are all have worked in industry and come with lots and lots of experience. We have textile rooms with lots and lots of up to date equipment. So I think that's that's a question that you need to ask yourself. Uh, I think the experience you would get in college would be very different to what you would get in school. Uh, another question we've been asked, is there a difference in experience between studying at different campuses? I think you need to look at the um, website and the prospectus because courses do vary slightly from campus to campus and student recruitment will be able to give you that information if you want to email them or if you wanted to ask us those questions because this chat will remain open uh, for another 10 minutes or so. Um, when uh, applying for an apprenticeship, would employers prefer a BTEC or an A-level? We don't offer any apprentices, uh, apprenticeships in the creative area at the moment, so um, unfortunately that wouldn't apply. I don't think employers would necessarily prefer either qualification as they, they are both equivalent, as I explained earlier. Uh, we will be staying with you now for another 10 minutes or so. So we've got a video to play out just to give you a bit of an insight as to what it is like on campus. Uh, we've got a video showing the a variety of campuses and different departments, and it'll give you a bit of an idea of what to expect. We'll keep the chat open and we will carry on answering your questions. Thank you.
thank you very much for listening. It's been a pleasure to present for you this evening. Hopefully I'll get to meet some of you in September and uh, I'll ask Peter to post in the chat the apply button. You need to go onto the website, click apply and fill in the form if there's a course that you would like to apply to. We will stay on the chat for another five minutes if there is any questions that you'd like to answer. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>